Good morning, St. Mary's. Good morning, St. Mary's. Fantastic. Well, nice to see all of you. Welcome to St. Mary's. The last time I saw you was last year. And I wonder, you know, what a long time it was. And we thank God that God has, it has pleased the Lord that we can see this new year. And I'm sure the Lord has great, great things for us this year. My prayer that 2022 is going to be a great year. Amen. Amen. For our brothers and sisters who are watching us on live stream, we want to wish you a blessed 2022 because God has got plans for you and us this year. And all we need to do is be attentive to his voice and his leading, leading by his spirit. What I would like us to do is for us all to stand and maybe where you are, as you walked in here, you never had opportunity to say hello to someone or wish them a blessed 2022. Uh, please don't shake hands. Just maybe just say hello to someone. Uh, and for you who are watching us by live stream, if you can just, you know, say hello to someone, that'd be fantastic. It's great to see you. Welcome to 2022. If, you, if, you, if it's possible for you while standing, uh, I would like you to get to uh, Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And I would like us to read from verses 1 to verses 5. I'll read the old verses, you read the even verses. So just from 1 to 5. So Psalm 103. Are you there? Are your friends on watching us live stream there? Please follow us through. I'll read the old verses and you read the even verses. Praise the Lord, my soul and all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's just lift our hands before God today. And I think as we lift our hands, and for you brothers and sisters watching us on live stream, I would like us just to have a moment to thank God. I want us to use this moment of reflecting on what God did in our personal lives and in the body of, the, uh, body of Christ church on what he did last year and thank him, and also trust him for what he's going to do this year. So just lift our hands and just worship him where you are. Just pray in your heart, or if you can pray out loud. Father God, we bless your name. We want to give you praise, for you are a mighty God. We are thankful, Lord, that when we look back, we see your goodness. Like David says, Ebenezer, thus far the Lord has brought us. And indeed, Lord, we went through a challenging year in different words. But Lord, you are with us. You never left us. You walked with us. You blessed us. And now, Lord, that we've crossed over into a new year, we are thanking you for your goodness and faithfulness. Thank you for the things that you have lined up for us this year to do. And by your grace, we will do them. For the Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We pray, Father God, that we're going to be a people are going to be obedient as we come into this year to walk in the way that you want us to walk. We're reminded in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs out. Do not you perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. So, Father God, as we come into this year, we are grateful of what you did last year. But there's new bread that you're going to give us, Lord, this year. New anointing that you're going to give us. New assignments you're going to give us. And so, Father God, we pray that we're going to be obedient and sensitive to your voice. In the name of the Father, the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. Yeah, for those who are joining us now, we want to welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, starting from next Sunday, I think all the services go as normal. Uh, today we are having a benefit service. And it was my prayer that, uh, you know, people don't make a mistake of coming at 1045. Uh, but it's great to see all of you. Maybe just one few, no, one, one notice is that before we went on Christmas, uh, we were promoting life groups. Uh, and maybe that time you never had opportunity, can I remind you that we still have some of these booklets at the back of church? And uh, please just kind of peruse through and see what life group you would like to join. The deadline for joining these life group groups is on the 10th of January. And so we just want to encourage you to kind of look through what will be of interest uh, to you. Uh, we're still going to be running home groups, uh, so we are having an approach, uh, a hybrid approach uh, for those who want to stay in the home group, who stay in the home groups, for, the, for those who want to take another opportunity of joining a life group, the booklets are there for you to see what we are offering. So Father God, we pray that as we enter in this service, that we begin with you and lead us by your spirit to the glory of your name. Amen. Can I have the prayer of our colleague, uh, Purity, um, on, on the screen, please? Colleague of Purity. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Can we all pray together? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to be standing together as we sing all Come, you faithful. We're going to stand together as we sing. We're going to have our music is all going to be on the screen. Uh, today we're not having music people playing here, so it's all going to be on the screen. And I pray that you're going to be singing out loud. Amen. Can we all stand and uh, we'll, be led, we'll be directed by our friends at the back.
we may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. We worship a God who loves us, a God of grace, a God who has promised not to leave us, nor forsake us. This God is a holy God. And in the word of God, it says, be holy, for I am holy. And yet this holy God has chosen to work with people who are not perfect, but a people who are being perfected. And because we are being perfected, we wrong God in word, thought, and deed. It's proper for us as we continue to worship him this morning, that we come to that place where we uh, check and look and examine ourselves, how we've been walking with him in the past week. And if there are things that we need to make amends, that we can do that now. So give us some opportunity for all of us to stay quiet, even for those who are watching us on live stream, just to be quiet and look through our lives. And if there are things that need amendment, we say to the Lord, Lord, sorry for these things. Can we all stay quiet for a minute? If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim to have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from all our sins and restore us in his service to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now just this time, uh, I know we are live streaming, I just want to maybe ask if there's anybody here who was a testimony to give on what the Lord has been doing, uh, you know, maybe in crossing over, or what the Lord did for them last year, and they feel maybe it's great for them to share. Yes, so can you please come? Thank you. And if there's another one, please, if there's another anyone else wants to share, if you can just come over here, wait over here so that, uh, you know, we are not late. Thank you. Someone just asked me if I had a good Christmas, and I said, not particularly. Um, I've had two close deaths in my family, and also an elderly gentleman I look after a little bit also was in the hospital on some New Year's Eve after falling at home. Did a few upsets, but I know probably many of you also have had some testing times the last few weeks. I just want to, and I say this to myself as much as to anybody else, that the Lord is faithful and he is present in our lives. And I remember Patch's sermon on Christmas Day when he said in Romans 10 that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. I want to say that my brother, who's been very uh, difficult with uh, Christianity, came to know the Lord about a month before he died, and he called on the name of the Lord. He didn't use me. <laughs> Um, too close, really, but he used his neighbour, and his neighbour said to my brother, um, I'm concerned about your spiritual future, and that must have rung some bell, and obviously the Holy Spirit was at work, so encourage one another, that is my real thought for this year, it's coming along, it's in God's hands, he knows the end from the beginning, and he knows the future, 
He is in control. He is sovereign. We cannot deny that. He is sovereign in the affairs of man. So that's an encouragement for you. Fantastic, fantastic. Ray, yes, thank you. I had to go to see my optician just before Christmas, and he told me that my sight hasn't changed for well over a year, so it's not likely to change now. So um, I just thank God for that. Amen. 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 Yes, yes. Steve, you can come. Just come and wait this side. Fantastic. Great. Thank you, Steve. Come. Thank you. Uh, just a few words. Um, many of you will know that Sarah and I spent um, December in Uganda. And um, just very quickly to report that we were absolutely thrilled with everything our Father's House Ministries have been doing out there. Their faith is so strong. Every little home that we went to of all the children that we sponsor, they all prayed, they all thanked you all, and they are always keeping us in their prayers. So I just uh, thank God for that, for their faith to us. Thank you. Fantastic. Great stuff. Well, we thank God for all that God is doing. Amen? Yeah, it's great, uh, actually, also to see, I mean, uh, uh, Steve and Sarah coming back, safely back to, to the United Kingdom. It's great. Especially that now, you know, the travels are quite challenging these days. So if people come back in one piece, we give God the glory. Amen? Great stuff. Well, um, anyone, anyone else, just before we move on, anyone else? Yes, Sue, can you come? And anyone else who wants to come, as Sue is coming, please come and stand over here. Yeah. Great. So thank you so much. Thank you. Some of you may know this, but if you're not on the um, prayer link, then maybe you don't. Our son Ian had to go to Dubai on the 10th of December till the, tw till the 18th um, for business. And I jokingly said to him, it's a bit close to Christmas. Well, unfortunately, my fears were realized. And when he came to test to get back on the airplane, he was positive with COVID and he was feeling ill. Um, they put him in a quarantine hotel. Thankfully, his firm, McLaren, stumped up for a double room. So he was better than a lot of people but he did have COVID and he was quite poorly for several days. The blessing in that was that being in Dubai, they arranged for a doctor to visit every day to check on them, which wouldn't have happened in UK. Um, but they did tell him that he couldn't be released until he had tested negative one minute past midnight on Christmas Day. Now, he has two small children, age eight and six. And when they were told this, they immediately sent an email to Father Christmas asking him to delay delivering their presents until the last drop on the 25th, hoping that Daddy would be there on the 26th. That broke my heart. but. Things had to fall in place. The doctor had to be there at one minute past midnight. The test had to be turned round. He then had two hours to get to the airport. And then he had to be able to get on that one flight out of Dubai. And we put out a request on prayer link. And did people pray? People prayed. And I kept getting these messages, the word joy throughout the whole of that week, which you may think strange. Christopher uh, um, did a sermon on joy. I went to the prayer ministry team. The word they got for me was joy. I was reading the um, Bible Society Advent calendar, 
and the word that kept coming out was joy. Every time I picked up a word, it was joy. And I said, okay, Lord, joy it is. And it was joy because everything that should have fallen into place fell into place. And Ian was own home at 5 p.m. on Christmas Day. Thank the Lord. Amen, amen. Well, we thank God. We thank God for all that God has been doing. You know, in the little things, medium things, and in the big things. God is good. Amen? Great stuff. Right. Anyone here who is celebrating a birthday? Anyone celebrating a birthday? No one's celebrating a birthday here. Okay, okay. Well, my daughter is celebrating a birthday tomorrow. She'll be too... Oh, yes, 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 Timothy, yes. Fantastic. Now, Barry, can you do us a favor? Can you play happy birthday? Is that, is that kind of on short notice? Because we've got our little friend over here. It'd be great for us if we can't play, then... Uh... Paul, can you switch the powers that be at the back? And we can have uh, our friend, would you, Heather, would you mind coming to France so we can sing happy birthday for Timothy? Oh, yeah, he's, he's not worried coming alone. That's great, my brother. You come, you come over here so that people can see you. Great stuff. Now, can you tell me how old you are? How old are you? Three, still three. You're still three. All right, okay, okay. Is that three? Four tomorrow. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, great. But you know, also my little girl called Temwani will be turning two tomorrow. So you are four tomorrow. My daughter Temwani is two tomorrow. So we're going to sing. Are we okay then? Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tim and Temwani. Happy birthday to you. Amen. So what we are going to do now, I'd like you to just stretch forth your hands towards Tim here. I know Temwani is in absentia. She's watching maybe on, on live stream. And just, just let's pray for these two little ones and that the Lord may bless them. Uh, so, Father God, we pray for Tim. We pray for Temwani. We pray, Father God, for these precious children. Thank you, Lord, for their lives. And thank you, Lord, for all that you've planned for them. May you protect them, Lord, from evil. We pray that, Lord, you may anoint them afresh with the power of your Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we just give a hand of applause to our friends here? <laughs> nice one, my friend. God bless you. Yeah? yeah? Good stuff. All right, we'll stand again, and we'll sing two songs. Let's stand together. Shields my 
Now I'm running 
Indeed, Jesus is our living hope. Even as we go into 2022, we started this year, it is that Jesus Christ is our living hope. So, Father, we thank you for the hope that we have in you. And nothing will change that. And nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. We may be seated in the presence of God and we'll have Barry leading us in intercessions.
Let's pray together. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We come before you in awe and wonder. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. As the earth spins on the course you laid out for it, and a new year begins, we place ourselves in your hands, O Lord. This year, may we be blessed with a bigger vision of who you are, a fuller understanding of what you have done for us, and a renewed willingness to follow you wherever that may take us. Please help each of us to learn what it is to be truly in the center of your will, living according to your commands and being guided by you, that we may experience the sweet, wild joy of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are always doing a new thing, And in this new year, we thank you for new initiatives of faith and love. We pray for the new life groups soon to begin here at St. Mary's. Please bless and guard all those taking part, especially the facilitators. And we pray for the PCC and our leaders as they seek for a new manager for the Beacon Cafe. And we earnestly pray that you will bring us the person you have chosen for that role. We give thanks that Simon and Sue Morgan were able to return to Uganda and pray that they and those they love there will be kept safe and in good health. And we thank you for all the work of the local churches there in helping those in desperate need because of the pandemic. I will sing of your love and justice. To you, Lord, I will sing praise. Lord, we pray for your justice, for those suffering because of climate change, corporate greed, or political failure. Especially we pray now for the citizens of countries such as Bangladesh and the Pacific Islands who have contributed so little to the ecological disaster now facing our planet, but whose livelihoods and homelands are threatened. We pray too for all indigenous peoples whose lands have been taken from them by force and their homes destroyed. We pray for a fair distribution of vaccines around the world and for the life-saving work of medical charities such as Médecins Sans Frontières. Lord, please bless them and keep them safe as they seek to serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So many things in our world fly in the face of your ways, Lord. We see selfishness, falsehood, cruelty and corruption all around and many are brought to despair. But we are your people, Lord, agents of your light and love through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let our light so shine in this time and in this place that people may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Please, Lord, teach us how to share our hope in you in simple, natural ways with those we meet this year. May your Holy Spirit be present in those meetings and may our love for you and our love for one another be evident to all. Let your glory shine and your will be done on earth with the same joy and obedience as in heaven that many will turn to you in repentance and faith. Lord, In your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, teach us holy obedience. 
For you have shown us in your word what you require, that we should act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. And so may we be able to say with the psalmist, I wait for your salvation, O Lord, and I follow your commands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Father. Um, as we continue in the service, we'll have Owen come to read the passage of Scripture, and then Tony will come and preach for us. Thank you. Today's reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11, and then moving on to 29 to 31. This can be paid, found on pages 7 to 5 of the Pew Bibles. That's Isaiah 40, 1 to 11, and 29 to 31. Comfort for God's people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all, all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people would see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are like grass and all their faithfulness is like the flowers in the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, Lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you so much, Owen. Oh, I'm quite loud. Um, Happy New Year. Uh, uh, how sweet of you to take that as a greeting. It's actually the title of the talk. No. <laughs> um, it, it, we had a little bit of Handel's Messiah at the start, and it starts with comforty, comforty. If I'm not good. If you're not good, I'll sing to you. Okay. Um, it, it's talking about Jesus, talking about the Messiah. Start here. And I think that's brilliant. Isaiah 40. It's, um, 
700 years before Jesus, and, and that, that he's talking about Jesus. Um, and he's saying, comfort ye my people. Okay, so this is not a great evangelical talk, evangelistic talk. It's um, my, to my people. Okay, my people, comfort me. And so, it's great. And I love Isaiah. And I love Isaiah because, next slide please, because Isaiah is the one you do for those cynics you're talking to who say, well, yes, it's all been written down and, you know, it's been changed over the years. Because there's a copy of Isaiah which was buried about the time, well, in a cave actually, about, about the time of uh, Jesus' birth and dug up in 1957. Now, in that time... The scrolls have been rewritten every 60 years. So by the to time the Romans left Britain, it would probably been recopied seven times. But they count every A, they count every B, they count every C. They count from the end of the scroll to the middle and make sure they get the same middle letter. If they've made three mistakes, they start again. So the copy dug up had three letters different. Have you any idea what a big book Isaiah is? Three letters different. They were in names and they didn't change the pronunciation. So when you're talking to people, Isaiah is the reason you can say, there was a man called Jesus. We know what he said. We know what he did. Now deal with it. Okay, so what's he saying here? Well, he's talking about, uh, next slide please. He's talking to people who had been trusting in their prosperity, they'd been making deals with other empires, and it had all gone badly wrong because they had stopped trusting in God. And so they had been sent into exile. Now, exile's a terrible thing. Moved probably about 500 miles at Spear Point, the uh, young children w w would would die because it was too arduous, the pregnant women would be killed, the old people would be left to die. My father was a prisoner of war and walked from Boulogne to Poland and decided to walk with the middle-aged men because he thought they would survive. Exile is terrible because the weak, and part of your culture is to look after the weaker people in your society. The weak could not be protected. Worse for the Jewish nation because they believed God was in the place where they'd left. So they believed they were going away from God. It was a terrible time. In chapter 42, he says, Jesus will come with justice. So we people, you see people moving now. They're not exiles, they're refugees and they're fleeing injustice. And that's a terrible thing too but it's not as bad as exile. And if you look at the map of democracy and the map of Christianity, the world map, it's virtually the same. Because Isaiah said, Jesus is coming to bring justice. There are a few people who flee from justice. That's an entirely different thing. Okay. Um, that's because you haven't paid your parking fine. Anyway, okay. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, okay, um, I was, uh, if we, I was to analyze um, chapter 1 to 39, it's doom and gloom, because he's showing them, um, I mean, there are moments where it says, a, a son will be born, unto you a son is given. Anyway, but it's showing them how their lack of trust in God has brought this about. And there's going to be even more. So if we look at the next slide. So how could they get in this situation? Well, it's prosperity and arrogance. And they end up in a situation of guilt and shame and doubt and regret, sorrow and despair. It's unbelievable that they could do this. But you know... The Old Testament is really talking about us. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Isaiah is in this situation, and he's looking right over the top of the troubles they're in. And he's seeing what God is going to do. How brilliant. And so he looks over the top of the Assyrians, 
and even over the top of the Babylonians who are going to be a big problem in 200 years' time. And he looks to the arrival of Jesus and he says, be comfort, uh, be comforted, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. He doesn't speak with judgment, condemnation or, or ridicule. He speaks comfort. And so that's what he's speaking to us. Next slide. I'm on a couple. One more. There we are. That's <laughs> so what's he saying to us? The Old Testament is talking about physical and the New Testament is talking about spiritual. So it's what it's saying to us? Well, he's saying there are two kingdoms. Next slide, please. And we uh, are, are, are privileged because we've acknowledged Jesus as our king to be in the kingdom of God. But we wander off. There's no boundary. We wander off. Um, we wander off into an exile of our own. But his message to us is, next slide, be comforted. We may wander off into guilt, sorrow, regret and despair. The alien world that isn't part of God's uh, plan for us at all. It's not part of what he wants for us. We've just wandered off into a bad place. But he says, uh, next slide. Uh, go on, one more. Thank you. Every valley. Every valley. I'll sing again to you if you're not careful. Um, okay. Um, will be exalted. Okay. It's the yes, but how. Sorry, YBH. You do that in every sermon. I'm sure you're noting in the margin, yes, but how. The yes, but how is he's coming to get you. It's all right. Be comforted. He's coming to get you. The difficulties will be leveled out. And I love it. Isaiah says, here is your God. He's coming to get you. He loves you. He's going to speak tenderly to you. Next slide, please. There may be some valleys of despair that need some work. There may be some doubt that needs some work. There may be some mountains of pride and some, oh, independence, prosperity and arrogance. Well, is it just in the past or is it part of our society? But the good news is, and the lovely thing is, Jesus taught us from the prodigal son, if we make one step towards him, he will come running, making the mountains low and filling the valleys, running towards us. I loved it. When I was commuting to Dorchester, Yellowham Hill, there was a horrible little narrow road beside, and they came with the earth movers and just chopped the top off Yellowham Hill. And, you know, the dual carriageways, you're just going into Dorchester and put it in the, in the valley. And they did exactly that. And it's a lot easier. And God says, yeah, I'm going to do that. And, of course, he's talking and used to talk about uh, John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, next slide, please, is introducing the expression of God's tender love for you and me. Now, we all need, next slide, uh, tender care. I, I, yes? Is that a bit masculine, putting a <laughs> somebody putting oil in an engine uh, to express tender loving care? Um, yes, probably. And But the, the next slide. We need somebody to love us, forgive us, heal us, and take us home. And this is what Isaiah is saying to us. I love this picture. This is straight out of Isaiah. He holds the lambs close to his heart. It's like the toddler that falls over in the mud. A mum doesn't say you're dirty. She picks him up and hugs him. My uh, foster grandchild fell over with such a womp. I mean, he, he, he's 18 months, you know, just womp. 
and wah, and my son says, I'm coming, and he stops crying. And, uh, did it stop hurting? I don't know. But the father is coming, so he's not crying anymore. Okay, we get it wrong. This is my favorite way of getting it wrong. Next slide. It's saying, I'm very worried. Uh, Jesus, my shepherd, you can't possibly handle this. I need to do <laughs> Even as I say, I think the arrogance of it is so startling, isn't it? I need to do the worrying for you. And you just think, oh. It, when I notice I'm doing it, I just think I am so stupid. But it's, it's a great way in which we say, out of the way, I need to cope on my own. And you just think, no, he's coming to look after you. Why, why push him away? Why be independent? It's all about trust. And that's the problem they had. They hadn't been trusting God. Next slide, please. Now, another way, the different of cultures. You, nothing lasts 2,000 years in our culture, but in Isaiah's culture, you wrote it down, it was so respected, it was still there, word for word, 2,000 years later. Brilliant. He's saying, uh, if we understand the culture uh, they're in, they understand about shepherd. And he's saying, I won't leave anyone behind. When he says, those that have young, they can't move as quickly as the rest of the flock. So he's saying to us, when we feel, oh, we're not a Christian like they are, or, you know, we're not, then somehow, somehow not. He says, I won't leave anybody behind. I'm not, I'm not going to leave you behind. And he's there. Your promise is there. He says, he gently leads those who have young. And then he goes on, next slide. And those who are worried about their mortality and, and who isn't when you're facing COVID, he says, the word of the Lord stands forever. So if God is telling you this, it's going to happen. And it's great because the next slide it says, oh, I do understand. Oh, I love this slide of somebody falling asleep on their laptop. I just think, you know, there are lots of people very tired. And he's saying, no, I understand that as well. You will soar on wings like eagles. And you won't grow weary because we are God's people. Comfort you. So he's saying... It's time to come home. Next slide. And the message from Isaiah is come home. Can we all stand together? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God. In one body by the cross, we meet in his name to share his peace. May the peace of the Lord always be with you. Where are you standing? If you can share with someone close to you, please don't shake their hands without permission. You may be seated in the presence of God. Yes, can I have the Eucharistic prayer on the screen, please? The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right 